Hello and welcome to Stupid Ancient History with Midgley and Taylor and our expert, non-expert and special guest James, Lord High Commander of the Science Cupboard, first of his name and knower of nothing. Hello. As always we're wearing togas and today we're going to look at the rule of Lucius Tarquinius Superbus or Superbus. Previously on Stupid Ancient History we've been looking at the various fortunes of the Tarquin Kings. Are the Etruscan kings? Or even the later Roman kings? Yeah, same guys though. Yeah, that's lots of different names. <laughs> yeah. do, do they ever just settle on a name? Nope, okay, that would great. be too easy. Don't be silly. Um, and after the less than legitimate rise to power with Tarquinius Priscus... Basically, which was him cheating his way to the throne. Yeah, um, but both he and the following king, Servius Tullius, had quite successful reigns establishing the Circus Maximus, games for the people and then with Servius reorganising Rome through a census. <laughs> Basically you've got one who was just a party boy who wanted to have a really good time and then you've got one who was like king of the nerds. Yeah fair enough. A bit different. Yeah, yeah. just a bit. Um, but despite his best efforts and even the suggestion of giving up the throne Servius couldn't really quash this kind of self-serving desires for the throne from within his own family. So Tarquinius killed him for the throne, as you do. Just bump I mean, as, as apparently bump as the bump Romans your did. Bump. I mean, somewhat of an understatement. His daughter smeared him up the road. <laughs> yeah. Still dead though. Well, yeah. I mean, if I, I hope so. God, I hope he survived. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's good. Just grim. the head. <laughs> So after his very public coup, Lucius Tarquinius takes the throne under less than auspicious circumstances after he's just killed his father in law. <laughs> and his wife has just smeared him across yeah, the floor. Yeah, the nut job. <laughs> uh, it's not the best transition of power, is it? Not really. No. Uh, you keep calling him Superbus. Uh, what's, the, what's the script with that? <laughs> well, it's not his actual name, and he's not an actual bus. Okay. Um, it's a nickname he gained. What, what does it mean? Does it mean, like, superb? No. Um, oh, he's I, called, thought, I thought that would have been quite sensible. <laughs> he's called, he gets called Superbus, or Superbus, from his actions, which start going downhill pretty much as soon as he sits on Did the Did anyone throne. think it was going to go uphill? <laughs> I mean, he started at well, the his bottom His dad's of the body hill. went up the hill. <laughs> So yeah, he gets this nickname because of his actions, um, and Livy, or as Livy puts it... Then Lucius Tarquinius was the king, and his deeds got him the name Superbus, which means arrogant or proud. Ah, okay. There you go. Because he banned the burial of his father-in-law, because he said that Romulus himself was not buried when he died. I mean, that is a cheap shot, isn't it? <laughs> not even allowing him to get buried. But is, what did you do with him? What, what's the point of that? Is it to, like lift him up and say like look Romulus was buried and he was great yeah but um, to be fair what are they actually going to bury well to be fair yeah <laughs> scrape him up into a jar I'm, I'm, depends how much you can cobble together <laughs> off the cobbles yeah yeah scrape <laughs> off the cobbles <laughs> yeah. no I mean it, it is it's a fair point I mean what we see already is super he, he's trying to style out the way he's come to power he's, I mean I'm, I, I'm a sheet because he was in the forum is uh father-in-law was stabbed wasn't it yep that's the most public place yep. you can do something and just in case you weren't at the stabbing point you could you see could... him go on tour around the <laughs> forum yeah so so how do you try and style this out well by that whole we're not going to bury him because you know romulus wasn't buried i was going to say it just detracts doesn't it from the uh, the fact that he was like killed and then uh, dragged around the streets for everyone to see. <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of takes the uh, the focus away yeah. from that, it, maybe. It, it sounds better, rather yeah. than just, oh, yeah, we just hosed him off the pavement. Scrubbed him down. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so he, he's, he's trying to, he's trying to make, he's trying to style it out. He's trying to make it seem more amicable than it is. And he's trying to say, yes, my father-in-law, who I murdered. We found a, a finger. <laughs> we're just we're a not gonna bury it. Finger. We found it, but the dogs had it, so... Yeah, he, he's trying to style it out. It's a bit like, um, he's trying to lift him up. It's kind of like when in Parliament, you know, when they say the right honourable member opposite, when we know yeah. really what they want to say is that Muppet over yeah. there. So yeah, he's, he's trying to style it out with niceties. What was the normal, um, like, burial for a king? Grandiose. Grand, fancy. So oh. nothing is a bit of a departure. Yeah, it's right. a lot of a departure. <laughs> 
Right, so this guy's only just come to be king. Yep. He's murdered his dad. Yep. Father-in-law. Father-in-law, sorry. Wiped his bits off the roads and stuff. <laughs> that sounds really wrong. <laughs> Wiped, Wiped the... his father-in-law off the road. Does, there you go. I know, I know what you meant, but that doesn't sound better. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, Superbus Arrogant, is that all he did to earn his nickname? Or has he do, does he do more? Oh, don't horrific? worry, don't worry. There's more. Of course. There's a lot there's more. Because, I mean, this is one of the kind of key debates. It's the... pretty one-sided, though, to be fair. Who yeah, are, if it's a debate, it's... who argues the other side? <laughs> <laughs> Brave people. <laughs> um, no, it's about Superbus and to what extent he's a tyrant and to what extent he's the core reason for the end of Roman monarchy. So, if you... So is is he the end of Roman monarchy? He is the end of Roman monarchy. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, he's okay. really bad, Jay. So he's so he's so bad. He overthrew a system of government. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And this I'm looking forward to this. This guy is going to be spectacular. Do you want an example? Go on. I want an example. Right, Livy. So then he killed the most important senators because he thought they supported Servius. Then he realised that he had made himself king in such an evil way that he might have made an example that could be used against him. So he, t he surrounded himself with armed men, since he had no right to rule except by force. Right, okay. So he he's ticking he's, all the boxes so for he's a tyrant. He's ticking yeah. all the boxes, and they, like all these most important senators, presumably, wasn't they the ones he was schmoozing with beforehand? Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, right, schmooze, schmooze, schmooze. Great, I'm king. You're all dead. And now it's I'm just going to... It? It's pretty much. And, and now I'm going to have all my heavies around me because I realise I may have made a bit of a mistake. Yeah. Okay, great. This, this guy is going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. He's not not the best to start. No. As king. So, um, what exactly was... How do people react to this? What what like the the, the normal populace? The kings are smear, their <laughs> their the senators have all been murdered, and you know, Done it. was that public public as well? No, um, it was known. It was known. Okay, and now he's got a load of heavies around him. How did people react to this? <laughs> well, they weren't too keen. I mean, like good. to some extent, you can say yeah, kings in the ancient world were quite willing to remove any opposition hmm. quite violently as modern states are um, <laughs> things haven't changed that much we, we will not give any examples though for fear of our impending deaths <laughs> um but the king, thing is it's, it's rome and rome like to think they're a bit more civilized than the others is this not proving them wrong this is yeah they don't like this they, right, you know, okay. we don't do this but there's more this is more living Mm -hmm. yeah. So he says he made most people afraid by holding trials for serious crimes with no juries, just him on his own. Sounds perfect perfectly right. fair. <laughs> okay. This way he could kill or send into exile or punish by taking their belongings. Not only the people he suspected or didn't like, but also the one who, ones whose money he wanted to take. Right. So. It, it, does a state get the like holdings of people who get executed? It's not the state anymore. It's, he it's takes him. It. <laughs> it's like like your house, you're dead. <laughs> it's quite interesting as well, though, isn't it? Thinking about this because he's obviously the one that is the last of the kings because he's so hated. But then, if you look at emperors that come later, some of them follow exactly the same. Yeah, kind of... How does that end for them? Well, th no, but that's what I was going to say. It doesn't end well, does it? And they're always seen as the ones that are really, really bad. Yeah, they didn't. No they like. are. So it's this kind of... Didn't Octavian and Anthony do this, though? Like, murder a load of the richest people to get a load of cash? It wasn't so much the fact that they were... Bit, I mean, if you're thinking about Augustus in the prescriptions, what he's doing is he's getting rid of anyone that's seen as a... As opposition, but then he also, it's not take, so their, much he also take their money. He might have done, but <laughs> it's more. It's more if you think of like later on, if you think of people like Domitian, who literally just kind of gets rid of most people, and then he he, he says he's going to do all these things for the Roman people. Realizes that he hasn't got enough cash, and he hasn't got enough cash to pay the army, and goes, "Oh, it's all right." He's got a massive estate, so if I bump him off, then I can nick his estate and sell it, get the money, and then I can. Pay off Sh what I owe. Surely by now you've realised you're never going to get her to admit anything bad about Augustus. It'll happen one yeah. day. Yeah. It will happen one day. He's my homie. <laughs>
That's not embarrassing. Right, let's move on quickly. So yeah, he's he's kind of fulfilling all the he's he's ticking all the boxes on the on the tyrant checklist at yep. this point. Um but what what state is the monarchy in? So if he's murdered all the senators, how is he ruling this? This, well, this yeah, yeah, don't worry. We're not done yet, though. Okay, great. <laughs> um, like all good megalomaniacs, um, <laughs> he's got a solution to what to do about the missing senators. Okay. Livy? Tarquinius was the first king to break the tradition the kings before had of consulting the Senate on everything. He sorted out all the public business through family friends of his own accord. He made and destroyed war, peace, treaties, and friendships with whoever he wanted without the people or the Senate approving. Right, okay. So it's just a dictator, basically. He's just getting his exactly mates to do said. what? Yeah. To Everyone's. agree with him. So what are the Senate doing if they're not advising him? Cowering <laughs> in a corner, that's what I'm doing. Or basically kissing his backside. I think they're staying at home being annoyed. Right, okay. Yeah, they're on their own lockdown. <laughs> and, I think, and I think some of them might be sharpening a few things as well. Yeah, they do that. Yeah, but I mean, Superbus wasn't quite so dumb to think that he could just do all of this without repercussion. He didn't think, oh, yeah, this is easy, um, or without any more support. Yeah, so as a result, he decided to bolster his power just outside of Rome as an insurance policy in case anyone tried to do anything to him. Yeah, so if he's annoying people in Rome, he needs something out of Rome to oh, call so these when, guys. when you say bolster power, what, like, have a garrison out there? Well, what's better than a garrison? A full army. How about an entire people? Oh, God. <laughs> so what he does is he marries his daughter to one of the most important and wealthiest of the Latin leaders. Oh, okay. Remember, the people who live around Rome. Um, but doing this, he's also ensuring he has a power base of support outside of the city. So, yeah, effectively a second army mm. that he can bring in to crush any rebellion. Who's this daughter's mother? <laughs> We're not sure. We're not sure. <laughs> no. it's, it's not Tully one, Minor. One, one of the Tullias. Right, okay. One of them. We she, don't know much about her daughter from somewhere. <laughs> she basically pops up, gets married, and we never hear from her again. Oh. Quiet one then, I'd say, wouldn't you? Yeah. Don't say or. Oh, that's a good thing. She escapes. Fair play. But as soon as the Latins make their deal with Superbus... Obviously thinking that an alliance with Rome through marriage is going to be a good thing... They soon get a taste of what they've let themselves in for. <laughs> Back to Livy. Now Tarquinius had great authority with the Latins, so one day he decided they should meet at the Grove of Ferentina because he wanted to do some business. Many people went at dawn. Tar Tarquinius did go to the meeting that day, but he arrived just before the sunset. Right. You'd be a bit angry, wouldn't you? It's a bit so lazy. It's like a power play, just like, I'm yeah. so cool, you wait round for all me. Wait, yeah. wait around for the bus. Yeah. Literally. Can we, can we just call him the bus? <laughs> if you want. Go. Yeah. So they did all wait around for him. Um, and it didn't go down too well, as you might expect with many of the Latins, especially one particular person called Turnus Hedonius. Yeah, and this man, Turnus, clearly takes this opportunity. He's got a captive audience that stood around. Uh, to moan loudly and to anyone who listen about this Roman king. Mm. And Livy says... It was not surprising that the name Superbus, the Proud, had been given to him in Rome, as this is what the crowd secretly called him, because what could be more arrogant than for the whole Latin people to be messed about in this way? Chiefs had been called from their homes far away, but the man who had called the meeting was not there. Seems fair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, can't really argue with that. So when Superbus finally does turn up, yeah. after they're all being stood there, checking the watches, um, he gives them some flimsy excuse about having had to sort some important business out in Rome. Mm. Murdering more senators. Mm. No. no. <laughs> Sorry, it takes all morning. Yeah, and to make things worse, he said that he was too tired to have the meeting now, so they should all just meet again in the morning. That's a power play. Isn't that it? is a massive <laughs> power play. That's not going to go down well either. So the, the the Latins at this point, like now they're seeing that he's a bit of a jerk. Did they had stories about what he'd done, gotten out of Rome? Yeah. So they they, they knew what they were they, getting. They into. Sort of the yeah. Some people clearly knew, and they're like, oh no. It's but true. isn't it that old adage? It's better to have you know keep your friends close and your enemies closer. They no, if it's this it. guy, I say that I want this guy. Keep this far guy away far from away. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, so if that one bloke, what was his name? Turnus. Turnus. Yeah. I mean, if he was complaining before, I'd be asked a lot more people whinging <laughs> now. They were. Um, and obviously made bold by this, Turnus, the guy who has been started the complaining, uh, takes the opportunity to call Superbus out on his lateness in front of everyone. Which is not a smart move. No, I don't think that's going to go very well. <laughs> so over to Livy. Um, Tarquinius was more annoyed by this than he looked and immediately started planning to kill Turnus as he thought he should make the Latins as scared of him as the citizens at home. Even though he was powerful, he could not kill Turnus openly, so he destroyed the innocent man with a false accusation. Which was? Well... Slept with his <laughs> <laughs> Is that a false accusation? We just don't know. Maybe not. Um, so that night, Tarquinius sets about putting his plan into action, and he bribes a Latin slave uh, to hide a lot of weapons in Turnus's house. Okay. Like blast and all of them. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, so the next morning, Tarquinius calls together all of the Latin leaders um, before dawn and tells them that Turnus has been planning to not only kill him, which would be bad, but kill all of the other Latin leaders as well. And funnily enough, there is evidence <laughs> of these shenanigans that are afoot in his house. <laughs> so rightly so, the Latins wake up Turnus Guards there and everything. They search his house and... Miraculously, they find a large amount of weapons that have been dragged out from... Are being dragged out from all over the place. Under their bed, in, in their, their cupboard. <laughs> in the bread bin. God. This guy's got weapons everywhere. Everywhere. That he didn't realise were there. Uh, I mean, I, either he's properly dumb or these slaves are experts at stashing weapons yeah. in, like, uh, bread bins. And also, and, like, a whole... Arsenal of, you know, spares, sword shields. They must have made a lot of noise hiding <laughs> the stuff in his house. Imagine just, like, dropping out of the floor. <laughs> so anyway, caught weapon-handed, Turnus is brought before the people in chains and... Without being able to defend himself, well, yeah, because he'd taken all his weapons off him, Turnus got a new sort of execution. He was thrown into the water of the Ferentina and drowned in a wicker basket full of rocks. Nice! That's quite unpleasant. <laughs> so now that Superbus had uncovered the evil, <laughs> said with raised eyebrows, plots. and coincidental plots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Convenient plots. Um, they then went about suggesting the Latins and the Romans re-establish an old peace treaty, effectively bringing the Latins under Roman control. I mean, his control. <laughs> it, basically, yes. <laughs> he is Rome. They are one in the same. Great. Uh, please tell me that's stupid enough to fall for this. <laughs> no, they, they did. Um, oh, anyone God. who did have the doubts about what had happened were or were previously allies with Turnus and found it strange that he suddenly had all these weapons. <laughs> um, they were so scared of what Superbus would do to them that they just kept quiet. So now the Latins were in fear of Superbus, Superbus even, as much as the Romans were. So now he's got two groups of people who are scared and presumably yes. hate him. Yeah. I always <laughs> say to kids when I'm teaching anything to do with you know dictators or tyrannical leaders, Fear is an excellent method of control. Works a treat. But so does being nice. We should <laughs> okay. put that on for um, the disclaimer. Uh, so this guy's a bit of a wrong gun. Yeah. He's not really yeah. he's not really making any friends. He's murdered a whole lot of people. He's, oh, he's oh. weapons grade unpleasant, he isn't is. he? He is. He's not he's not a good lad. Um has he done anything even remotely like Kingly or something not evil. Yeah, not not even. not moustache twirling. <laughs> did he do anything normal? Ever? Well, I mean, he did undertake a few building projects in Rome that ended unemployment. That's good. Hold Please on, don't tell me murdered all the unemployed <laughs> people. <laughs> we shouldn't get too excited, no. should we? So the first suit idea Superbus has. <laughs> so he's laughing. I've solved the, the homeless problem. Killed all the homeless people. Uh, just, <laughs> just as a disclaimer, a James, <laughs> James is not advocating the murder of I'm not. I just, the unemployed. It was a random thought that popped into my head. 
bad <laughs> head. Seems, seems super bossy. <laughs> so the first idea Superbus has oh, Johnson, is not to <laughs> kill the unemployed, <laughs> and, but it's to build a temple to Jupiter in the Roman Forum. I thought they already had one. <laughs> yeah, but not like the one he wanted. Is it bigger? He, well, Livy describes it like this. A temple of Jupiter on the... Turpian Mountain as a monument of him being king and his family name. So he builds a temple that's, to himself. So that's say, so Jupiter <laughs> like being king of the gods yep. or Superboss being king? Yep. Yes to both. Yeah. So oh. He builds a temple to himself. <laughs> it, it's more kind of... It's, it's more like... Here's the Temple of Jupiter, brought to you by... Right, okay. The super bus Temple yeah. of Jupiter. Yeah, so again, it's more about him and his self grandification than any deep religious cause. Right, okay. Uh, and everyone's just happy with that. But there was, was it, an omen. Did they, I about to say, did, <laughs> if it's more birds. <laughs> did, did, there was blasphemy a thing to the Romans. Oh yeah, very much. Right, but okay. But it's alright, there was an omen that yeah. sorted it all out. It wasn't birds. <laughs> Is it flaming baby? <laughs> It is said that a human head with the features still visible was found by the people digging the foundations of the temple. The appearance of this showed without doubt that this would be the citadel of an, of an empire that would be the head of the whole world. Not a cold case. I mean, nowadays... <laughs> I was going to say, was, like, was, it, was it... Cold not, case! Was it not his, far, was it not his father in law Oh, we missed a bit. <laughs> but no. Well, it's a random head. So he has found a head in... Just found a head and went, oh, this is great. We're going to be in charge of the world. <laughs> right, okay. I, I don't know where they got that idea. Of, I'm, surely there's, somewhere there's got to be a book for deciphering what these what things I, are. I was just, what? what I'd like, like to write a imagine. Loads of seers sat around going, oh, hang on. Head, face, partially visible. Yep, sick. We're going to be leaders of the world. I just want to ask something which is not, not sensible. Oh, do I need to stop this before you do? <laughs> no. What would they have thought if they'd found someone's ass buried? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I don't know. Answers on a postcard. <laughs> leave, it, leave us a comment below. What would they think if they found someone's backside buried into the ground? Uh. Oh my god. <laughs> So once the handy omen had been interpreted, the work began to go ahead at full speed. And then some. What? <laughs> <laughs> so obviously spurred on by this omen, Superbus decided to review his plans. Random score. <laughs> so Livy says, so the king decided to spend even more money. And so the money from Pometia, which was supposed to be enough for the whole job, was only just enough to pay for the foundations. That's... A little bit. <laughs> it's an overspend, I mean, isn't it? Kevin McLeod on Grand Designs would not be impressed, would you, James? You've got to project manage yourself effectively. It's not, not this guy. <laughs> so, who, who wears Pometia? It's a settlement near Rome. So, he's just nicked some money off there? Yeah, pretty much. Right. So, he's building temple he can't afford. Yep. yep. With his name so on. It's got his name all over it. Yep. And it's already gone massively over budget. And the playing for it with money they don't have. Yeah, right, okay. Uh, it's going well. <laughs> yeah, so this, yeah. this is what Livy says. He was determined that the temple would be finished and brought in craftsmen from all over Etruria, not only using public money, but also labourers from the population of Rome. It was a big job and the ordinary men were also needed in the army. The people did not mind building temples for the gods with their own hands as much as the other projects that followed, which were less extravagant, but bigger jobs, making the new seats in the circus and building the Cloakia Maxima. What's a Cloakia Maxima? The Cloaca Maxima, it's, um, it's a sewer. Oh, okay. So, right, okay, so surely that's, that's public work, that's a good yeah. thing. He's actually doing a king's job. Yeah. Well... It is, but it seems that this building kind of lack, shall we say, had gone to his head. So whilst the temple was still being built, he decided that he needed to do more building. So, 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 so projects going at the moment. The temple, yep. yeah. massively over budget. And Too big, massive. not enough money, not yeah. going to work. More seats at the Circus Maximus. Not big enough, needs more seats. And the sewers. Underground sewers, because they're cheap to build. 
okay, and he wants to build more. Yeah. Yeah. So really what he should have done is just not have built anything else and built the sewer. That would have been the more logical thing, which would have brought more benefit to everyone. Yeah. What makes you think logic fits <laughs> into this guy? That that's, that's what he should have done, isn't it? That would have made sense and would have probably helped his popularity as well. Yeah, I think that ship's already sailed. So, obviously, with all this building work going on, this is how Superbus ends unemployment, I assume. Yeah, he's just, he's just to give everyone a job, even if we can't pay him. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, didn't the Nazis do something quite similar? Sort of. Yeah. Right, okay. Worse. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> th th There is normally a but to these things. Everyone's got a job, but we can't pay them, I assume. <laughs> yeah, you, you're not wrong there. Um, <laughs> when we say everyone had to do the work, we mean pretty much everyone. Well, certainly the plebs. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to get away um, from doing it, are they? No, and this didn't go down well with these proud Romans. Um, as one Roman at the time highlights... Bear with me. Um, misery and hard work of the ordinary people who had been forced to dig out trenches and drains. He also said that the men of Rome, conquerors of all the people around them, had been made labourers and quarry workers instead of warriors. Right, okay. So, so they've basically forced labour. Yeah, so they kind of feel so, demeaned, I suppose, yeah. don't they? Like, yeah, they're so not the brave been, heroes anymore, they're, they're road diggers. And, they're digging sewers. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what's more... If that's not bad enough, all the plebs are miserable grinding themselves down to build these grand effigies. Um, when any of the patricians, the wealthier Romans, dared question any of Superbus's ideas or decisions or in annoy him in any way, he'd simply point them in the general direction of the labouring plebeians with the idea that that could be you as well. Right, okay. Back in your box, unless you want to be digging hole. So he's bullying everyone. Yeah, yeah, so even through that, he's just turned it, hasn't he? Like, ending unemployment, good thing, but then he's actually using it to just kind of belittle people and bully people and threaten the other people at the same time. So, yeah, it's not good. He's, he's not turning... Well, he's turned out to be the king I, I thought he would be, basically. <laughs> but not a good one. So now we come back to kind of the big debate, the big issue. Was si was Superbus a tyrant? I'm going to go yeah, out he sounds and say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, this is why we said it, it's not a very balanced argument. You've got lots of reasons why he was a tyrant. He comes to power through a bloody coup. Mm -hmm. um, he murders anyone he thinks might challenge him or murders anyone in any position of power. He misuses public funds. Misuses public funds and you misuses his public position to gain other people's funds mm -hmm. for himself. Um, and generally goes around being a wrong in to a lot of people. So there's plenty of arguments there. What what what's the counter argument? Well, the counter argument is that he did do sort of some good things. He built a sewer. Yeah. But in a bad way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he built a temple, a nice religious building. With his name on it. <laughs> but also, you've, you've got to think, just because something is not in the sources doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Well, you've got to think... You've if got to be careful saying that because you're just heading down aliens now. Well, no, but just because he's, if he's the last king of Rome and ultimately it's got to end somewhere and it ends with him then it kind of makes sense, doesn't it, that he is shown as being this absolutely oh, he, horrendous king. He's almost like a pantomime villain. Yeah, because he's like, he's like the lesson Just that when you think he's bad, he doubles down on yeah, more Yeah, I mean, the, the, the fact that, like, we, we said before, like, tyrant and rex, these are horrible words yeah. to the Romans, like, bad, bad words. Like, the fact that this one person has done so much to completely diminish the kind of efforts and kind of, you know, victories of yeah. the previous, was it six, seven of them? Six. Six of them. He's got to be pretty bad. It, and he is pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, to undo everything. Yeah, but if you if you did get posed that question, um, the the positive things he does is he ends unemployment. He yeah, so, builds peace with the Latins. He builds a temple. He builds the Cloaca Maxima. Yeah. They no by no means do they balance out mm. the bad things. But you've got to offer some balance. But on the flip side, you've got to say, well, if you've got others that are put across as being a particularly good ruler, so for example, like Numa, yeah, can you fully believe that they were that good? Mm. Well, Probably not. Yeah. 
What? Oh, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, if this ended the Kings, it was mm-hmm. that bad, it ended the Land of Kings, was it the, um, kind of that already laid the foundations for getting rid of the monarchy sort of thing? Yeah, so you... Was there an appetite to not have a king? Because I'm just thinking more, I know this is jumping ahead quite a lot, like, when you had Nero and then the Flavians, like, were they just so on board with emp- an emperor, then they were like, yeah, we'll carry on, we'll have a new emperor. Rather, think, than, rather than overthrow the whole idea of their like government, there was a bit that was a bit more problematic. With this, yeah. you're right though. There is an appetite. So Servius, before he gets you know <laughs> spread <laughs> around, <laughs> he suggests giving up the kingship because he says Rome's too big. Yeah. Um, and it seems that and we'll get to this in a couple of episodes when it does come to the end of the kings. There's this line saying that each man had their own complaint. So it's not just this guy being a panto villain. Mm. There is other things as well, but he comes along and just seals the deal. He's right. like, no, this, this is what's coming. I'm not having this. Mm. So there you have it. Our quick overview of the reign of Lucius Tarquinius Superbus. Thank you for listening. We hope it's been useful. As always, leave us a comment below. And until next time, goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>